Hello and welcome to another quick walkthrough of some of the features and functions that are available within the ArcSight ESM correlation platform. Uh, in this example, I'm actually going to dig a little bit more into an often overlooked aspect of the, uh, the console is what we call an event graph. Now, if you've been using the system for some time, you'll understand that this is an active channel. It's a table. It's a way of showing the information. I'm actually going to do a little bit more on that uh, in another video. But in this example, I'm actually going to dig into a little bit more around event graphs. Event graphs are very powerful ways to show and visualize information and, and indicate what's going on. So I'm actually going to spend a little bit of time just digging into that and just explaining some of the capabilities and functions of, of this really overlooked uh, way of displaying and, and visualizing the data. Now, typically you'll get an event graph in a dashboard like this, and that's okay. Uh, in this case, it's actually got the table of the information underneath, and it's just visualized. Now, notice uh, if you look at it in the table, it's okay. It's useful, and I can see some information. There's a lot here, and I've got limited real estate, so it's not filling out the whole tables here. But if I put it into a, a visualization, I can see a lot more of what's relevant here, what's the important linking aspects. Um, in this example, it's actually uh, threat intelligence data, uh, and I'm actually going to talk through the scenario here. So what we can do is uh, we can view it and we can manipulate it, but what's a little bit more useful, if you just click that little logo, it says, uh, logo, it says float. What it does is then boosts it up, takes it out of the dashboard and gives you a new window. Window. Notice how that the table behind has changed as well, uh, and it just gives me a much better view of the data and the visualization. Well, what am I looking at? Well, I've got three aspects to this particular event graph. Um, what we're seeing is uh, the red boxes. Uh, we're seeing some uh, blue or sky blue circles, and in this case, we're seeing a, a white uh, um, final large box. What does this mean? Well, uh, probably the easiest thing for me to actually show is just if I hover over something. So if I just uh, hover over this particular one here, what this means is it's an attacker, which means this is the source of something. And you can see that uh, it, uh, it showed me 35 uh, with regards to the total number. Now, if you notice, and conveniently I timed it to do this, uh, how it actually just suddenly changed that. I dragged and, and made it a little bit more visible. Notice how it suddenly changed and refreshed that back to that view. That's because this is a real-time graph. It will update and redraw itself at regular intervals. Um, the way to stop that, you see the little pause button there? Just hit pause. It's simple as that. Stops it from being redrawn. Then you can just uh, drag and drop uh, the particular boxes and make it much easier to see and, and use and manipulate the, the particular information there. So do encourage that. Always hit pause, then start manipulating it and looking at it. But like I said, I timed it to do that just to, to illustrate what happens when you don't do that. Now, going back to this, we saw that this is an attacker. We see this 35. We see that this one's 98. This is because it's relevant. It's relevant to what we want to see. And the size of the box, the size of the attacker, colored in red, indicates uh, how many of those particular, uh, of those, in this case, events have occurred. We can also now see that the, the middle side is this blue circle. This is the linking condition or the linking event. In this case, it's a correlation trigger. This is actually, again, threat intelligence data. Uh, it's, uh, this is the name of the rule that's been triggered. Uh, and in this example, it's a successful connection through a Tor IP address that's been provided from threat intelligence from the threat stream platform. Uh, again, the size of the circles are important. The bigger the circle, the more the number of the instances of that. And then finally, we see the destination. Again, the arrows indicate the direction of what's actually going here. And we can see that these particular attackers are linked with these particular events to this particular, in this example, target. Uh, the target here is an IP address, and we can see that the total number there is 179 instances of this. Why is this relevant? Well, what we can now see is that there is a number of attackers some of which are, are more frequent than others, using a common mechanism to attack a particular target. That gives us a lot of information to allow us to start understanding and start digging into things. And what we can do is, is understand what the relevance is this, with this as well. White box, in this case, indicates the target. It also means that in this particular in instance, we have no matching log events to indicate that we have direct evidence of this. Uh, we can see that there's some log en entries that indicate there is something. So uh, clearly it's some sort of firewall match, for example, which has then triggered the rule match. But in this case, we don't have anything direct from this IP address. 
if that we did see some subsequent access from this, typically if it then exhibits a targeting or, or attacking mechanism on another IP address, for example, that would then consider it to be an attacking target, uh, which would then color the box blue. Uh, it's actually a dark blue. In this example, we can see, and this is the scenario I wanted to talk about, bunch of internal IP addresses connecting through, in this example, we can see it's the Tor IP address. This is clearly the Tor IP address that they're connecting through. It's been successful. So it's not just one IP address that's looking, or one user that's looking to, to hide their particular um, uh, activities uh, on the internet, for example, we're seeing that there's a, there's a sequence here. Notice the IP addresses. Uh, notice the, the internal nature of those IP addresses. And for example, this 10.0 range, we're seeing 10.0, uh, 113, 112, 20, 111. Uh, we're seeing a number of different internal addresses. Now, it would be useful for us to dig into this and start understanding what they are, where they are, what the relevance of that is. But this is clearly some form of Tor anonymizing uh, connections through uh, the Tor network from these particular hosts. Typically, this will be some sort of infection, uh, maybe some malware specifically that's trying to talk out through the Tor nodes through to the destination. This is where we really want to dig in and start understanding uh, and matching further intelligence around this as well. For, for example, we want to understand what's the mechanism? Why is this? What is this particular IP address linked to? This is where threat intelligence starts to become very useful so we can start to understand why uh, and what is the relevance here uh, and, and what does that link to and, and the priority accordingly. Um, what can we do? Just a little bit of a walkthrough on the event graph as well. We can display the data in different formats. We can do it as a hierarchical, which is this. We can do it as a uh, different views. We can show everything targeting into. We can do the circular displays, which changes it slightly. So you, you know, there's lots of different ways we can we can show that. We can we can zoom in. We can zoom out. If you've got a lot of uh, nodes in that particular box, uh, we can also, uh, like I say, drag and drop. Uh, you can also dig into these as well. Now. Um, you can actually just take a look at and analyze in channel. So just like you can with an active channel, you can then just open up a particular channel for that IP address uh, and, and just take a quick look at what's going on. So in this case, I'm just going to open a channel for that. Uh, in this example, it's over a day. So uh, it's actually going to go away, retrieve the data for this particular event channel. We can see that all of the connections and log information that we have for this particular IP address is listed here. Uh, so this is actually a bit suspicious. What is now useful is what we could do is uh, you know, do another event graph on this. So I'm only going to do a limited amount here. Uh, and what we can do is we just throw that into an event graph uh, and see what the relevance of this particular communications are. Oh, ah, now this is very interesting now. Now we can see this IP address to this particular IP address, uh, this particular destination target, for example. We can see that there's a whole bunch of accepts. We can see that we've actually picked up some sort of compromise involved. Uh, we're seeing that there's been some FTP connections as well. Uh, and we're also seeing that this is hitting some malicious domains as well. Ooh, we really need to dig into this because when this is not just a connection through a Tor network, we're seeing that this is a whole bunch of malicious uh, activity from this particular IP address. So we really need to dig into what's going on here. That's all just by looking at, in this example, some event graphs and manipulating those and drilling down through those rather than having to just look at a table and doing filters and trying to position it through that. Using something like an event channel, uh, event graph is a much easier way of, of displaying that data. So I hope that's been useful and uh, good luck in hunting and looking at th uh, your log data using an event graph in the future. Thank you very much.